On YouTube, there is no shortage of people willing to teach you Lightroom. And the reason for that is most people use Lightroom. Most people use Lightroom because Lightroom is easy to learn. It's intuitive. There's sliders for everything you need. And then everything is kind of right there. But the thing is, most of those people that teach you Lightroom, they use Photoshop to process their own photos, a lot of them. And it really annoys me because I feel like people tried to paint Photoshop as this incredibly difficult, arduous thing to learn. You, you don't need Photoshop. You, you don't need, you just stay in Lightroom. I'll edit in Photoshop. That really bothers me. Photoshop is not as difficult to learn. And you know, when they're talking about Photoshop, they use the term luminosity mass as this super difficult, confusing thing that some people use. And it's just over the top. You don't really need to learn it. Well, I'm gonna teach you some luminosity mask stuff and you'll see that it's not as difficult as people would lead you to believe. So in a scene like this where you have really bright highlights and some pretty deep shadows, it's a fairly high dynamic range scene. And I know that if we recover the highlights, we're going to gain a bunch of saturation. But if we were to, for example, just recover highlights in Adobe Camera or inside of Lightroom with the highlight slider, you don't get the same effect that you would get using a luminosity mask. So for example, if we go into Adobe Camera and just grab the highlight slider and bring it left, you can see that we recover a lot of detail, but you can see that it, overall it has just kind of a flattening, dulling result. We gain some of the saturation and color that's underneath that water, but we, we lose the contrast, we lose the highlight pop, that brilliance that I really like in a waterfall scene like this. So instead of recovering through a highlight slider that's actually gonna decrease contrast, we're gonna recover those highlights using a luminosity mask with a contrast adjustment attached to it. So when you create a luminosity mask, you're gonna use something like Lumenzia or TK Actions. They're both panels that are designed solely to create luminosity masks. They do lots of other things. They cost around 30, 35 bucks. They both have free versions of these if you want to give this kind of stuff a try. So you don't have to go run out and buy one of these panels. They both have free versions that do pretty much the same thing. You can create all the luminosity masks that you need. So for example, in TK Actions, if I click on this, which is our luminosity mask creation tool, you can see that a, a lights one is simply a black and white version of our photo. And as we cycle through these different luminosity masks, they get more and more restrictive and I can target the highlights or I can target the shadows. So in this case, if I wanted to recover the highlights in that water and just darken down that water, but maintain contrast, I could find a luminosity mask that's going to target that water. Let's say a lights two, you see how anything that's white is going to be included in this mask or selection. So in this case, the water is very much selected and there's very, very little else selected in this. So if I was to create a levels adjustment and use this as the layer mask, that levels adjustment is only going to go into the water and a little bit into some of the bright foliage. So let's create a levels adjustment. And you can see we have a levels adjustment and you can see here that we have a layer mask attached to it. If I hold down alt and click on that, you can see that this is our layer mask. So what's cool about this is that now when I add contrast, I can grab the right slider, bring it left just a little and grab the midtone slider and take it to the right. You can see that we're recovering highlights just like we were with the highlight slider, only we're maintaining contrast because we're not allowing the brightest highlights, for example, in this background, we're not allowing those brightest highlights to darken at all. We're keeping those nice and bright with this right slider, but we're darkening the darker highlights to really increase the contrast in those highlights. So before, after, We've recovered highlights in that water, but we're maintaining the contrast and the brilliance in that water. And that's super important because as we darken those highlights, we want them to maintain contrast. Otherwise it looks fake to our eyes. It looks, it looks unrealistic. But if we maintain the contrast and maintain the difference between the bright highlights in the brightest water and the darker highlights in the darker water, we're gonna maintain interest and we're gonna maintain a realistic look. So before, 
after. Another cool thing that you can do with luminosity masks is you can target different colors. So for example, if I click on this button, this is going to allow us to target a specific color. So if I click on this, we can take our eyedropper and click on this green foliage, say up here and hit OK. It's going to create a layer mask or a luminosity mask that's going to target only the green tones. You can see how it's leaving the water alone. It's because that water is actually blue. This mask is only allowing us to target the brightest greens. And we can also tweak this to whatever we want it to be. For example, I could click on this layer mask button here that allows me to modify this layer mask and we can brighten it up. That way these brightest greens are a bit more selected. So if we grabbed something like this and created another levels adjustment, we're going to have a levels adjustment with this as its layer mask. That means that this adjustment is only going to go into the brightest greens. So if we wanted to breathe a little bit of life into the that bright foliage, we could grab this right slider, bring it left, grab the mid-tone slider, and take it just a little bit right. By taking this slider to the right, it's going to maintain contrast while brightening. So if I turn this on and off, you can see that we've really increased the depth and dimension in those greens without just brightening and kind of creating a washed out look. So in these two adjustments, which took me way longer to explain and to talk through than to actually do, we went from this to this. We added depth and dimension into our green highlights in the top of the frame, and we recovered the highlights in the water while maintaining contrast. And that's a big distinction between what this does and a highlight slider. So here's another scene that would benefit from adding contrast to the highlights and maybe reining in those highlights, darkening them down without them getting flat and lifeless. Because in a scene like this where you have a lot of fall foliage, the saturation and the color is really important. So let's use Lumenzia in this one. All I'm going to do is create a lights one luminosity mask by clicking on the lights one. Now I will create a levels adjustment by clicking on the levels button. So we have a levels adjustment with this as its layer mask. And now I'm going to double click on the levels adjustment and we will darken with the mid-tone slider by taking it right. I can always click on the eyeball and see the before and after of this. And we can also take this right slider and bring it just a tiny bit right. We gotta be careful because this water is is very close to white. So if I grab this right slider and bring it too far left, we're going to start to blow out highlights. So before, after. So now we can do a very similar thing, only in a slightly different way. Rather than just applying a luminosity mask as a layer mask, we can paint through a luminosity mask. That way the effect only goes into the areas that we want it to. For example, we can add a bunch of highlight punch without the effect going in the water and blowing out the water. So in this case, we'll just create a levels adjustment and I'll double click on the levels adjustment and I'm going to look at the majority of the photo, but ignore what happens in the water. And I'm going to brighten with the right slider and then grab the mid-tone slider and take it to the right. I want this to have an overall brightening effect in the brightest highlights, but increase contrast kind of in those mid-tone areas before, after, before, after. Something like this I think works pretty well. I'm gonna go pretty extreme with this effect because we're going to just paint it in a little bit through a selection. So now I'm gonna put a black layer mask on here. I'm going to hold down Alt or Option, click on New Layer Mask. That puts a black layer mask on here so that, that adjustment is being 100% hidden. So now, rather than grabbing a luminosity mask and applying it as a layer mask, what we're going to do is grab a luminosity mask, and then make a selection of it. So when something is an active selection, it's functioning like a stencil. So we're gonna be painting through a luminosity selection, and it's going to restrict our paint to only go into those highlight areas that were a bright gray or a white. So with a paintbrush, we'll go 70% opacity. I've got white selected. And I'm going to start to paint into some of the areas I want to have a little extra highlight punch or kick. As I paint through here, I'm in control over where that paint goes. 
but the luminosity selection is restricting which tones it goes into. So I'm going to mostly put it into that background area before, after. If I hold down Alt or Option, we can see our layer mask and you can see where what our layer mask looks like. It's going into the highlights, but it's only going into the areas that I chose to paint. And if we make a mistake, like for example, if I over brightened this area, which we didn't really do, but we'll say that we did, I can just switch back to black and I can mask that area out. I can even hold down Alter Option and look at my layer mask as I do this and see what it is I'm doing. Another way that I like to use luminosity masks is to kind of recover highlights in areas that I don't want the eye to go. So for example, here we have the water exiting frame. I would like these highlights to be slightly darker than these highlights. The same with some of these ferns and stuff along the outside edge of the frame. I would like these highlights to be a bit more dull and recovered. That way the eye goes to the brighter highlights in the background. So an easy way to do that is just to grab a brightness contrast adjustment layer. Going to bring down the brightness, put a black layer mask on there. That way it's 100% concealed. Grab a Lights One Luminosity mask and make a selection of it like we just did. That way we have an active selection that's going to function like a stencil. We'll grab a 100% opacity paintbrush, white, and we'll just paint a little bit of this effect in the areas where there might be some distracting highlights that we want the eye to kind of skip over. That way it can travel deeper into the frame. It's like a very manual vignette where you're controlling where it goes by where you're choosing to paint, but the luminosity selection is choosing the tones that it goes into. That way we're not darkening the shadows, we're only darkening the highlights. The thing that you got to know is that it takes longer to describe this stuff than it actually does to do it. And what one person calls or considers incredibly difficult, another person considers pretty easy. Once you get used to the concept of these luminosity masks, once you wrap your mind around the possibilities and how it works, it's not hard. And a lot of people like to tell you that it's hard, mostly because it might be hard for them or they just don't want you to really learn that stuff. So hopefully this has helped. Hopefully this has unlocked an idea. You have to know that something's possible before you can go out and practice it. And also just because you can do some of this stuff doesn't mean you have to do it in every single photo. It's really useful to gain a new tool for the toolbox, practice it, and then eventually you'll come, you'll stumble across a scene where it could actually be useful. You don't have to use it in every single photo. I don't use it in every photo, but I use this stuff quite a bit. And for that reason, it's become easy for me. So hopefully it's going to become easy for you. And learning this stuff is in a lot of fun because it unlocks new ideas and new possibilities. So hopefully this has opened up something for you guys. We'll catch you in the next video. Take it easy, everybody. <laughs>